Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today I will show you how you can build a dual needle gauge for your Boeing overhead panel. For the build you will need four female and male hex standoffs, some gears, a bottom, middle and three upper plates, a ring and a glass for the later covering, two needles, two servo motors, a 4mm acrylic rod and a 7mm acrylic tube. The ring and the glass are glued together they are needed for later panel installation. The inside of this gauge isn't built exactly like this in the real gauge. I have left this area here as a cutout and made the engraving on the bottom part of this top plate here. On the rear gauge this is like a triangle coming in here and the engraving is on top of it. I was afraid that the needle which runs in this roof here could collide with this triangle because I have calculated the gear angle so that I can uh, reach a little bit wider uh, range here with this needle. And when I turn on the test function in Mobi Flight, for example, then uh, the motor will make a full turn to the right and after this to the left. And uh, then I couldn't uh, control the maximum um, range of this needle here. And so to uh, don't get uh, into this problem, I just made this as a cutout. On a dual needle gauge you will also need two motors to drive the two needles. And the motors of these two needles can't be placed on the same level. Because you have the outer tube with the gear that has to be driven. And inside this, there is this inner shaft with its gear. And this shaft has to come out of the um, outer tube. And so the gear will be at another level. Also, these two gears uh, shouldn't be too near to each other um, to avoid any collision of the two gears. And so I have raised this motor here. And this gear now sits six millimeter above the other gear here. The shafts are cut to size and the needles are glued to the ends. Acrylic rings glued to the shaft prevent the needle from sliding out of the gauge. The bottom needle, which is connected to the outer shaft here, and is prevented from sliding too far out or too low to the surface of this top panel by the two spacer rings here I've installed around this middle plate. At the top needle or the inner shaft I wasn't able to do this like this here because the shaft is inside the outer shaft. So from preventing the needle to go too low and scratching on the lower needle 
I have um, cut out um, some spaces from a foil and these I have used as a shim underneath this needle and this works well. There is a little gap between these two needles here. On the lower side to prevent it from sliding out too much here when it is installed in the overhead I used uh, some more uh, spacers here and little shims underneath my small gear so there is no gap between the end of the outer shaft and the beginning of the small gear of the inner shaft. You can minimize the shimming underneath this gear by uh, cutting the outer shaft to exactly the lengths you need when the small gear of the inner shaft begins. Now after I glued the gear to the shaft I made some uh, tryouts with this. It works okay but something is here that I find a little bit annoying and this is the play that the gear here has. If you can see I can wiggle here and there is much much play in this shaft and especially here at the end. This is a lot of play here. Oh, yes, you can see this here. And there are two reasons for this. Uh, and the one thing is that uh, the holes through these layers here are a little bit too big for the shaft. I've left them bigger as I cut them out on my CNC. Now on the laser, um, I can cut very precise and now they are a little bit too big. I can change this in the next gauge. But one thing that would really help would be if this inner shaft here would go through this last hole. It was planned like this, but uh, now I have turned these motors around during my assembling because I have seen that I can bring the gears to the inside, which is cool because now I have no gears here at the outside, uh, but the hole here through which the shaft would have uh, been routed would have brought much more stabilization to the shaft. So I will try to make this hole smaller, maybe with a little insert, something like this, or I have to make this bottom plate here new and disassemble the shaft here again and make it longer so that it comes out here and will be stabilized with this hole here. Now after I added a new inner shaft and extended it over this bottom plate here, there is no more wiggling here on the inner shaft. The only small wiggling left here is at this outer shaft here, but this doesn't affect the needle and you could only reduce it when you have nearly the same inside diameter of this outer shaft to the outside diameter of this inner shaft here. But this could also add some friction which is bad for the running of this gauge here. So for now this works fine for me and I think it's finished now. To test my gauge communicating with ProSim I have connected it to a temporarily MobiFlight module, which is just an Arduino, which I use for those purposes. You can see I have declared two outputs in MobiFlight, servo motor left and right, and assigned an offset. On the right side, you can see 66DA and 66DB. By the way, this is the first time I'm using the ProSim 737 Suite version 3. And 
until now I can say everything is working right out of the box here. Even your offsets can be imported. So if you are working currently on the version two, then you can go here to config and say import from version two and all your offset and settings will be important to the new version. But now to program the gauge in ProSim, I go to config and configuration and combine config. And this gauge we can find under the pneumatic category here at gauges. Several other gauges are here already. And what we are looking for is the pressure left and pressure right value. So I say FSUIPC 8-bit unsigned and enter my offset value for the left needle 66DA. And when Mobifly is started, I can already see uh, some changes to the needle when I move these sliders. The goal is that I move this slider so that the needle is at the point we are searching for here, 0, 40 and 80. So let's set the left needle to the zero point. You can do this by drag and drop or using the mouse wheel or just the arrow keys. I think this is the right position here and now the 40 position. There we are. And the 80 position. There we go. And now the same with the pressure right value, FZRPC 8-bit unsigned and the value 66 dB. And now find the zero point. There it is. And the 40. And the 80 value. There we are. And this is all we have to insert here in ProSim. Now to test the communication between a ProSim and the Arduino, if it is working, I say you can see and it is working because we have seen the needles moving. Um, but to test it in real life, I have started my APU. And when I switch the APU bleed on, then we should see a movement on the left needle. There it is. And the software goes up to 40. And so is the needle here on my real gauge. And when I switch this off again, then the needle should go back. Everything is working. I haven't found a solution to let the right needle run until now. But if you know a test I could run here, then I would like to read about this in the comment section. So now that the gauge is built and all the necessary offsets are programmed, I can continue my work on the pneumatics panels where this gauge will be installed later. And if you want to be informed about the release of this new video, then just subscribe to my channel. And if you want to build your own gauge at home, you can download a full set of files from the member section of my website. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.